Hi, and welcome to another episode of Business Unusual, Extra Credit with me, Barbara Corcoran, brought to you by my good friends at at and Business. Today, we're talking about an important subject, how to hire the best people. If you want to build a business, you better have the right people to help you do it. As I was building my business from the ground up, I knew I'd need a lot of people to help me realize my dream to be the queen of New York real estate. After all, a queen needs people adoring them, and they were my people that I was intending to hire. But we were, at that time, a nobody in our marketplace, and all the somebodies, all the better salespeople, wanted to work for my competitors, the big, powerful, and well-known brands that were in my industry. The minute I made my first $340 commission check on my first month in business by renting a one-bedroom apartment on the Upper East Side, I knew I had enough cash in my hand to pay for just one more person. So I did. And I continued to build my team from that point on exactly like that in the early days, buying new desks and phones and hiring new agents one by one. So if you're the head of your business doing all the hiring, a department head building a small team, or you're about to hire your very first part-time person, you better know how to choose the right person for the job if you want to eventually build a big business. I've hired a lot of great people over time. No doubt I have pride and joy in the people I've hired and nurtured over the years. But in the early days, I also hired my fair share of clunkers too. Clunkers, maybe not the right word, but folks who were not motivated at all. Complainers who like to complain versus do or individuals who just didn't work well with other people. Couldn't happen if you're building a team. But mostly, I hired great people. And I found that all the great people at work shared the same characteristics. Here's what I found in the great people that I hired, and here's what I look for. First, I look for happy people. Why do you want to work with someone who's miserable, only half happy? Happy people come with a whole bunch of great attributes that you want to be around. They're team players, they're enthusiastic, they come with a smile on their face, they even say good morning. Happy people. I only hired happy people. I hired people with high energy. I have found that anyone who does a great job at whatever job they have doesn't unless they have high energy. I always hired attitude over experience. I guess I had to make a couple of mistakes falling for experience over attitude, but I found you could teach anybody anything if they had an attitude of wanting to learn. So I put attitude first and experience was way down the list. I always looked for team players who like naturally to hold hands with other people, who like to be on a team, who like to play together and accomplish something together and take credit for a job well done with other people versus hogging it for themselves. That's a team player. I look for that attribute. And I also look for empathy and the ability to walk in the other customer's shoes. Now, why would empathy be important on my list? Because if you have empathy, you can walk in the customer's shoes, you can walk in the boss's shoes, you can let, walk in the shoes of someone less fortunate at work. You can communicate with other people in a genuine way if you can walk in the next guy's shoes. And last, I looked specifically for the natural aptitudes of what the particular position demands. Who you look for in aptitudes in a salesman is quite different than what you look for in a bookkeeper. What you look for in a manager is very different than what you would look for as a line worker. So I would make a careful list of the specific aptitudes I wanted naturally in that person's personality. So I helped to make the perfect hire. In my media business today, I hire people who have a natural aptitude to do the job well. Always natural, I want to see. You can't teach somebody to be a blue color if they're a red color. It just doesn't work. I am looking for someone who will do the job well, who has the attitude to believe that a job can get done, and who want to be part of the team in my office that's so happy and share in the team's success. Those are my attributes that I'm looking for in my media business. Hey, your hiring goals may be different than mine, but the point is that you need to know exactly what your goals are, what you're after when you're out to hire a person. You need to figure out that first 
to set yourself up for the best success. Here are a few things I do in my own business to make sure I have a stable of great people always at the ready. Hey, I'm always looking for people everywhere I go. Hey, and if I'm talking to you, I'm interviewing you. You should know that. I found my best people through the years in unexpected places like hotel concierge, flight attendants, teachers, waitresses, always finding talent everywhere I go. I have my eye out for it. I always stay open-minded on people. Often the right person walks in for the wrong job and you want to be open-minded enough to recognize them for who they are. Let me share with you a story the day I met Esther Kaplan, my future business partner. She walked into my office for a sales position, a commission sales position. She was an executive secretary. One minute later, I knew that Esther would never be a great salesperson. She was too buttoned up, too contained, too conservative. I just couldn't even picture her in the sales field, never mind in my company. So I gave her a courtesy interview and on the way, pushing her toward the door, I handed her my business card and she opened her purse. And that's when I saw what was inside Esther's little oval purse with a clip on top. It was a miniature file cabinet. And she took my card and carefully dropped it in the right compartment in her file cabinet. I had never seen anything like that in my life. I've never seen anything since. But I knew in that moment that Esther might not be a great salesperson, but she would make a great partner for me to keep my whole business in order for the rest of my life. And so I hired her. I hired her as a salesman and as quick as I could, I turned her into a partner. I learned a very important lesson on that hire. I learned that in the end, there are really only two kinds of people at work. Only two kinds, don't be fooled. There's two whole categories you could divide people to. One group are the expanders and the other group are the containers. Expanders always are in love with what's next. What's the big picture? How far can I go? How much commotion can I cause? How could I charm people? How much attention can I get? That's an expander. A container is totally different on the other side of life. They wanna anticipate what's around the corner. They wanna make a system for keeping everything in order. They wanna do it if they do it once, they'll make a system for doing it a hundred times so they don't have to exhaust themselves anymore. They're extremely articulate, they're good with money, they like to keep things in order. They're great at filing. That's a container. Well, Esther was obviously the ultimate perfect container and I was obviously the expander. And so together, we were a dream partnership, the container and the expander. And I worked for the rest of my life to quickly identify the personality of someone, a container or an expander. And I have found that never both, somebody strong in one area, or the other. And that was a very important lesson I learned to build my business. But generally, how do you find really great people? Let me share with you my best tips in hopes that you could use some of them. Number one, I think it's important to make sure you cast a big enough net. If you have a big net, you catch a lot of fish. If you have a little net, you only catch a few fish. Post your job opening on multiple sites and also promote it like crazy on social media. That's the new hiring board in town. Make sure everyone at your company knows who you're looking for when. Very often you overlook your own people who are the best source of great new people because people who are wonderful tend to recommend other people who are wonderful. Almost everybody on my team today came through a recommendation from one of my other great employees. No surprise, that's the way it works. But cast a wide net. Number two. Attracting good people is extremely competitive and you'll need to impress people early. Be certain that the job applicant gets the right impression of your business and that they like what they see. That first stop is usually your website, so make sure it represents your company very well. Remember that every interview is a two-way street. When you're the boss and do it often enough, you forget that you're not in charge. Not in an interview, it's a two-way street. The applicant is judging you on a first impression, just as you'll be judging them. I'm sure you're aware that employers today are facing one of the toughest hiring markets in history, no matter what their business is. You're not alone. An amazing number of people quit their jobs last year. Two and a half million people are missing from the workforce today. They left 
to take care of a family member, retired early, went into business for themselves, or a lot of people just decided to stay home. That makes attracting employees much more challenging than it's ever been before. The many opportunities available to workers today has never been better. Think about that. And job seekers won't settle for the same old jobs. Uh Uh-uh, those days are over. They won't settle for old wages or lopsided work-life balance situations because they've decided to leave it behind. That's over. Employers today face the huge challenge of attracting good people among so many competitive opportunities, and that competition is tough. Well, here's a few things you should keep in mind that might be helpful. First, be upfront about your expectations to the applicant. Have a super clear job description. Let them know if they'll be expected to come to the office or not, what their exact responsibilities actually will be, who they'll report to, what your vacation policies, what your benefits are, and very importantly, how can they get ahead? This is not an extra anymore. This is what people want. How do I get ahead? Make sure to be clear about the technical support your business offers. This is not an extra anymore. Everyone's learning to ask about it. It should be at the top of the list as employees need to know how seamlessly they can get their job done at the office and at home. Questions like, Do you provide a computer for me at home? Do you provide Wi-Fi at home? These are very important questions today. Explain that the software you offer, top-notch software, helps them do their job well, how they will stay connected in doing their job, how they will connect with their coworkers that they may never meet in person, and how you're going to conduct virtual training and get them onboarded. These are all technology-based issues that you must have the answer for. Today, these are the key selling features brought to us by COVID. Good technology, strong connectivity, and the right cybersecurity in place are today's keys to creating successful and comfortable work environments for both your employees and your business. Remember, it's a job seeker's market now. Things have changed. The employer used to be driving the car deciding the opportunities, the pay, the skills, the hours, but now for you to compete and win, the employer is forced to listen to their employees in the back seat. They want flexible schedules, higher wages, and added benefits, even things like student debt payments or large signing bonuses. You've got to be aware of what needs to be offered today. You'll need to get creative with your benefits that work for your business and keep tabs on your industry to make sure you are measuring up against your competitors. Just as important, make fun a priority. Today, more than ever, people don't want to work all the time. They want to have more fun at work too. Company get-togethers, exciting virtual events, and bonus days off ensure that people are having fun. So you have to, as the head of a business, plan for the fun of your employees if you want to retain them. Today, all employers face the added challenge every day of making sure the great people they've hired stick around. Why would you want to go through all the bother of recruiting great people, getting them in your firm, only to have the next guy take them out? I learned again and again, building my business and being involved in the many businesses on Shark Tank, that fun in every instant builds team loyalty. Fun also builds creativity. You don't want to do without those two very important traits in your firm. Why would anyone, I ask you, jump ship for the next guy when they're being paid well, but they're also having so much fun and camaraderie and love the people that they're working with. It's got the glue in it that makes people stay. So how do you choose the right person for a specific position? Today, most applicants are interviewed online and hired without an in-person meeting. That's different. In-person interviews make it so much easier to make an accurate judgment of an individual. But today, it's not what's happening. Here's what I've found helpful to me in assessing and hiring the right person when the interview is done online. I always make a point to study the resume beforehand and prepare my questions. It helps you stay on track and assures you'll get all the information you're out for. When the boss is wrestling through a resume to figure out There are questions in front of the applicant. It's impossible to pay attention. And besides, you lose the advantage of making the person feel important. You even run the risk of offending them. I always make a point to 
study the resume beforehand and prepare my questions. Then I flip over the resume as soon as I start so I can pay total attention to the human being in front of me. Spend a minute up front. Being a nice person, small talk makes people comfortable. It sets them at ease and makes them much more likely to act themselves, and that's what you want. Compliment their outfit, the pretty room behind them, or even ask about the weather if you can't think of anything else. But in short, warm up the situation to make them feel comfortable so you get to really see their natural personality, not a performance. Immediately after you finish an interview, give your applicant a rating of A, B, or C. I do it because it gives me a basic summary judgment. If you've rated them an A, make a note of what you particularly liked about them. You might not remember it later, and it keeps things straight. And when you're ready to choose among the final candidates, you only need to choose among your A. Or you keep interviewing if you haven't found any A's. One advantage of a virtual interview is that you can record it. And you can look back later and have a second look. So ask permission if you can record it. Everyone says yes. It gives you a shot at getting a second impression later. Today, I help hire the right people for many of my Shark Tank investments. And like everybody, I don't have a lot of time. So I try to stay focused on the important stuff that makes any small business better able to compete in the marketplace. The things that make money and help the business grow. In our post-COVID world, every business is much more dependent on having the right technology to grow. We all rely on virtual interviews, have virtual meetings, use web conferencing, and depend on so many other collaborative tools to do our best work. So for every business now, having the best technology in place is so essential, and choosing the absolute best technology partner who's able to provide the best tech solutions for your company is so much more important than ever before. Check out at and Business to help you choose all the right solutions to keep your business and your employees seamlessly connected. Again, I thank you for being here with me today for another episode of Business Unusual Extra Credit with me, Barbara Corcoran, brought to you by my good friends at at and Business. I hope you've learned a lot and you come back next week for more tips and tricks on how to move business ahead. Thanks for watching. For more videos from AT&T Business, click subscribe.